Maddie is uh, developing a punctal plug based, uh, based delivery technology called the Evolute. The, um, when we look at segmenting this market of drug delivery, traditionally eye drops have been used to treat most anterior segment diseases. We all know there's problems associated with eye drop use. They burn and sting. They're uncomfortable for patients. And as a consequence, uh, compliance rates are very low. So we believe over time the market will shift to more non-invasive technologies, and we've highlighted three on the slide. We also believe that invasive technologies will have a place, but we think those will be used for kind of the minority of patients that have end-stage disease or serious disease. So we really believe this, this model and market is going to shift to non-invasive drug delivery over time. So then when you consider that, and if you buy that premise, then when you look at the non-invasive technologies, what are the keys to success? Well, we think those really center around you know, how easy is it to, to place the device? How easy is it to remove? Does it pose cosmetic issues for the patient? Yet is it easy for the patient to identify? How tolerable is it? Uh, what kind of drug delivery do you get? Is, do you get a consistent efficacy uh, level, uh, sustained efficacy level? And can it be used broadly across multiple disease states? So we believe the Evolute matches up against these criteria better than the other things in, in development. So since we're dealing with the punctal plug, based delivery technology. The first thing that comes to mind is retention rates because retention rates have traditionally been poor. We specifically spend a lot of time and effort designing a device that has excellent retention rates as well as excellent comfort scores. So this is a multi-center U.S. studies, uh, two of them which were run in the U.S., 180 patients, and our retention rates in the first uh, week or first month were 98%. At week eight, they were 97 and 96 percent, and then by week 12, they were 96 and 92 percent. So we believe we've designed a device that has excellent retention rates over a period of time. So then the question becomes, how broadly can you use this technology? And we've highlighted all of the major diseases in the anterior segment, uh, including glaucoma and dry eye. And we have developed drugs across all of these major categories. Most of our clinical work has been done with latanoprost. Uh, we're now focused on developing travaprost and glaucoma. We've also taken olipatidine into clinical studies and allergy. Currently, Maddie's focused on two lead candidates, which are anti-inflammatories, diflupredinate, the steroid, and napafenac, the non-steroidal. And we're just initiating work on cyclosporin in dry eyes. So we believe that this technology can be used very broadly. It's also very well protected. We hit a major milestone and announced the issuance of our 100th patent last week. Uh, we're currently supporting 17 different patent families in what is really a global intellectual property portfolio. I'll highlight two of our U.S. patents, uh, both method of use patents, one to deliver an active agent using a punctal plug, wherein the punctal plug is inserted and it uh, contains a hydrophilic polymer. The second is a method of delivering a therapeutic agent um, with a body material that resides near the punctum. So we believe we have excellent coverage for this. I want to turn now to talking about some of the elution data, and this is our napafenac formulation. The initial formulation is shown in green, and you're looking at micrograms per day drug delivery over a two-week period of time. So we're seeing a peak of about two and a half micrograms per day, and we've specifically engineered this product to be used after cataract surgery, so we wanted to have a high burst during the first week following cataract surgery, then taper the elution rate uh, beyond that. We've improved upon that, and in black, you see the new formulation that we're planning on taking into clinical studies, and that has about a microgram per day higher drug load than what we achieved with the initial formulation. When you translate that into aqueous humor concentrations, the IC50 for this drug is very low. It's down around one nanomolar, and this is aqueous humor concentrations for our initial formulation. And during the first week, we're getting anywhere between a 15 to 25 greater drug load than what you need to get a therapeutic index level. Uh, during the second week, we're still at 10 times greater drug load. So we believe, based on the high elution rates, that this program has a very high probability of success. We are taking it forward in the clinical studies. We're currently in the manufacturing process. We expect to file an IND this summer, and we'll be running a phase two multicenter U.S. study looking at patients after cataract surgery with pain and inflammation. Our second program, Diflupredinate, is following closely on the heels. We expect to file the IND for this program in the fall and then take that forward into a similar phase two study design, again looking at pain and inflammation after cataract surgery. The full pipeline contains the two anti-inflammatories, then Travaprost, which should be ready to enter clinical studies around year end. 
We have studied olopatidine, and we are getting ready to do a formulation with cyclosporin, and that should be ready over the next six to eight months uh, as well. So I want to close just by summarizing some of the potential benefits of this drug delivery platform. There's a wide range of compounds that we've already formulated, so we know that it can be used broadly. It's a very flexible drug delivery profile, meaning if you want to have a burst after cataract surgery, you can engineer that. If you want to have more of a steady state elution profile uh, for glaucoma or dry eye, that can be done as well. This is truly a non-invasive approach. You get a steady elution, constant elution rate, unlike eye drops where you have to have a high therapeutic level of drug in order to overcome the tear turnover problems. Our device is comfortable. I've worn one in my eye for over a year. We've got excellent retention rates. It's cosmetically invisible, but all you need to do to identify it is lower the lid and you can see it in the mirror so it's easy for the patient to identify. This is a preservative-free system, so we overcome all the issues associated with preservative use. And it's a passive system for patients, meaning the physician is really in control of their compliance. Uh, there's a favorable reimbursement opportunity because there's a procedure code already in place. There's strong intellectual property protection and a favorable cost of goods profile. So thank you very much for your time. Thank you.